Let's just look for a moment at the debt. <clears throat> this is what happened under the previous administration. The gross debt of the United States skyrocketed, more than doubled under the previous administration. And so this is what the current president inherited. This was the cover of Newsweek in De on December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. And the Newsweek cover said this, how great powers fall, steep debt, slow growth, high spending kill empires and America could be next. When you went inside in the story, it said this. This is how empires decline. It begins with a debt explosion. It ends with an inexorable reduction in the resources available for the Army, Navy, and the Air Force. If the United States doesn't come up soon with a credible plan to restore the federal budget to balance over the next five to 10 years, the danger is very real that a debt crisis could lead to a major weakening of American power. Mr. President, I don't know what could be more clear. Here's what's happened since 2001. And again, most of this is on the, the shoulders, the responsibility of the previous administration, because the debt absolutely skyrocketed under their watch. But it is continuing to grow and it must be faced up to. Mr. President, what's more alarming is the longer-term outlook. On the trend that we're on, the debt which will reach over 100% of the gross domestic product by 2019 is scheduled to hit 400% of gross domestic product by 2050. That's the trend line that we are on. That's the trend line we've been on since 2001, a trend line of massively growing debt. And the question is, can we face up to it? Do we have the strength, do we have the will to take on the burgeoning debt? Senator Gregg and I have proposed a bipartisan commission to deal with this long-term debt threat. It has 35 co-sponsors now. And the idea is to give a group of our colleagues and members of the administration responsibility to come up with a plan. And that plan, if it enjoyed a supermajority among the group of 18 who would be given the responsibility to come up with a plan, if 14 of the 18 could agree on a plan, it would come here for a vote. It would come here for a vote. Every senator would retain their rights to vote up or down, every senator would retain their rights. And it would require 60 votes in the United States Senate to pass. It would require 60% of the House to pass. The president would be able to veto it if he didn't like it. But I think it's clear that we have a real challenge facing us as a country. And it's going to take some special process to deal with it. What we have outlined is putting everything on the table with 18 members, 10 Democrats, two from the administration, and eight Republicans. All task force members must be currently serving in Congress or the administration. If 14 of the 18 can agree, that report would come to the Congress for a vote. The report would be submitted after the 2010 election, and there would be fast-track consideration in the Senate and the House and there would be a final vote before the 111th Congress adjourned. For those who say, well, that's gonna shred Social Security and Medicare, no, no, no. What is threatening Social Security and Medicare is to do nothing. Both of them are already cash negative. The trustees of Medicare tell us it's gonna go insolvent by 2017. The answer cannot be to do nothing. I believe this is a challenge that requires us to come together, Republicans and Democrats, House, Senate, the administration, 